I thought it is not possible to access the memory space of a PCI or PCI device from the user space. I thought for doing so you will need a Linux kernel module. But I was wrong. Actually, SysFS allows us to control PCI devices from user space. And in the next two videos I want to show you how to do so. So this video will be just a brief introduction to SysFS and PCI and PCI Express. And in my next video we are actually going to write a small program to control a PCI card from user space. But before we start looking at SysFS, let me introduce you to my PCI setup here. So I'm using a quite old PC here. Yeah, here's a picture of it. And in this PC I plugged in two PCI cards. One PCI card is a PCI to parallel ports card, which adds a new parallel port to my computer. And the second card here is a 32-bit GPIO card. So it offers 32 programmable inputs or outputs, and it can be used to yeah, control some peripherals from your PC. And in the next video, we are actually going to write a user space program to control this um, GPIO card. But now let me connect to my um, PC and let's take a look at all the PCI devices and let's check if we can actually find these two cards in our PCI bus. Okay, here they are. This, de this device here with bus number 4, device number 8, function number 0 is my GPIO card. And here it says unclassified unassigned class because for this device there is no existing um, Linux kernel module, at least not in the mainline Linux kernel. And with bus number 4, device number 9, function number 0, here we have our parallel ports card. And now let me open up a second window and connect to to um, my PC again. And let's show, and now I will show you where to find these devices in SysFS. So if we go to slash sys slash bus slash PCI slash devices, and if we're doing an LS here, we can see we have a bunch of devices in this folder all with the same structure. And this part back here looks very similar to a bus device and function number. And if we count all the devices in this folder, and if we count all the entries generated by us, PCI, we will see, we see the numbers match. So it seems every device here has a folder in this directory here. So if you are looking for our GPIO card, we can find it here. This should be our GPIO card. So let's cd into this folder and look, and let's take a look what's in here. So here we have some various files, and yeah, if I print out the header of this GPIO card, and if we look at some of these um, names here, we can find similar things here, which we can find in these files too. For example, we have a file here called vendor, we have a file called device, we have a file called class, we have, and we have a file called revision. So it seems here we can find parts of the PCI header too. And let me, for example, cat um, the content of the vendors file 
Here we see it's just a, the same string like our vendor ID from this device. And the same is true for the device file here, which is just our device ID. Okay, cool. So over this folder here, we have some information available about our PCI device. And we have another big file here called config. And let me just hex dump it so we can see its content. And if we look here, it's just the same content like we can see here in our PCI bar print. It starts with the vendor and the device ID, vendor device ID. Here we have the command and the status and so on. Third in here is our revision and so on and so on. So this config file just seems to be um, the configuration space of our PCI devices. And maybe let's go one step further and let's look at the bars from the devices. So here we can see our GPIO card has one memory bar with the size of 256 bytes. And now if we look at these resource files here, we can see we have one file named resource zero with the size 256. Okay, and if we look down here to this um, parallel ports card, we have six bars. The first five has the size of eight bytes and the last one has the size of 16 bytes. And if we CD into the folder of our piece and parallel ports, and if we, yeah, if we list all the resource files, we can see in the first, we have six files here. And the first five have the size of eight bytes. The last one have the, has the size of 16 bytes. So it seems each of these files is a representation of a PCI bar. So maybe we can actually access the PCI bars by accessing these files. And that's exactly what I want to show you in my next video. So that's it for today. I hope you've learned something. And in the next video, we will actually control a PCI device from user space by using file operations with these files here. So have a good one and goodbye.